What's up Kai Soto fans? This is the real Kai Soto fan channel KSF. This is about all positive opinions, rumors, news about Kai Soto. Let's get into it. Sharif Rashawn O'Neal is the son of Hall of Fame player Shaquille O'Neal, attended Crossroads School in Santa Monica, California and played as a senior forward. During his college basketball career in UCLA, Sharif began dealing with some health issues and was given a heart monitor by doctors to wear. He then eventually was diagnosed with a heart condition by the UCLA medical staff, so when everything was considered, he finally underwent surgery. Despite the minutes that was given to him in UCLA, he got 10.2 minutes of playing time in the year 2019-2020. In LSU, he got 14.5 minutes per game for the year 2020 to 2021, and this year, 2021 to 2022 in LSU, he got 9.2 minutes per game, but he only got 2.6 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, 0 0.4 blocks per game, 0 0.1 assists per game, 40% field goal percentage, 48% free throw percentage, 20% three-point percentage. In spite of having those stats from his college basketball years, Lakers signed him to join in the upcoming NBA Summer League. Regardless of having a respectable solid stats from just being a third option in Adelaide 36ers, for some unknown reason, Kai Soto seems to be still not in the radar in the NBA Summer League. There are a few speculation as to why Kai is still not part of the NBA Summer League and one is he still has one year and an optional one year contract with Adelaide 36ers of the Australian NBL. As much as NBA teams like Kai Soto, they seem to be reluctant in signing him probably due to being an expensive worth of buying out his remaining contract with 36ers of the NBL. Simply the better logical reason would be NBA teams are unwilling to play out the deal. Now the better approach for that of course is to continue Kai's contract but guarantee his playing time unlike his last season otherwise. He has to look for an international team, ideally EuroLeague, that will guarantee his playing time and very much willing to buy out his remaining contract because the goal should be making sure his productivity is as intriguing as ever, meaning better stats than his previous season with Adelaide 36ers. No doubt along the way during the season, his body built and quickness should improve but that is undeniably automatic as it is part of the process anyway. Sure. We're not going to do two-way contracts. We're not going to do G League, Exhibit 10 contracts, any of that. Kai is going to, at this point, and, you know, we always talk and, you know, this could change. But at this point, the plan is for him to go to a non-North American team. He could go back to Australia. There's some other teams in Europe that are interested. Uh, he, he's going to develop well, wherever he goes. He's going to have a personal agility coach, a personal strength coach, because those are things that 
Um, he's going to really work hard to improve upon all the rest of his game. And I think that, uh, you know, in the following season, he'll be in the NBA. Why, why go down the route um, instead of taking on these special contracts in the NBA? I, I didn't hear the question. You broke up. Could you repeat that, please? Right. Why go down that route of going to North America or to Australia instead of taking on the special contracts, uh, which, uh, of course, we know several known players to be going that go, going down that lane. Sure. With a two-way contract, you're not going to play yeah. very much. He needs to play. You're just not going to play very much unless there's a bunch of injuries or something unusual happens. You are the 16th or 17th guy on a team, and you just don't play that much. So he needs to play. Uh, so that's a reason right there that he wouldn't do that. Now, moving on to the most popular theory is his agent, Joel Bell, seems to be leaning into having a better pay, better deal, kind of motivated by money as what others imply. I might agree because he seems to be contradicting himself when he said that agreeing to draft and stash deal will not open to more better opportunities, but he then said that they won't having the two-way deal, Exhibit 10 or whatever. He even mentioned that having a two-way deal will only make him play in the G League and it won't give Kai a chance to play in the NBA roster because he'll be on the 16th or 17th spot which is definitely a fact of course but for me him playing in the G League will allow the team to dig into his abilities that may allow him to get a bigger role to the NBA team's roster like with Duncan Robinson of the Miami Heat was a key piece on the Miami team that reached the 2020 finals in 2021 playoffs as he shot 39% from the three-point field. It's on the side of a country road. Robinson on a bounce for Yurtsev, making a second straight start. There's Duncan. Kaboom! Butler against Abdiya. Sets up Robinson for that. Butler, eight points in a row, 10 of the Heat's last 12. Robinson from the wing. Kaboom! Tell me anything that I gotta keep this here. Duncan in the passing lane. He created turnover this one. Oh, Duncan hesitates now. Fires. Kaboom! He's had a quiet night so far tonight, old man. Two points, five rebounds. Duncan, that's not quiet at all. Five triples and counting for Duncan Robinson and John Wall. Robinson has quickly become one of the top shooters in the world as head coach Eric Spolstra likes to say and just got paid last offseason after he went restricted free agency reportedly knob a deal of 90 million dollars to stay with the heat oh i mean obviously it means so much um, on a variety of levels and yeah from a confidence standpoint you know there's one thing about this organization is that they're always going to be chasing uh, championships and to to commit to you know sticking me around and having me around um you know shows that they believe that i can really you know be a pivotal piece in that so uh i'm just you know super super blessed and, and feel humbled honestly um you know it's been a whirlwind it's a lot of emotions right now for sure uh but i'm just you know feel fortunate to, to be in this situation right now and i can't wait to, to just get it started um and, and, and get the ball rolling the largest contract in the nba history for an undrafted player surpassing Fred Van Fleet's four-year $85 million deal the year before. Not bad for sure for a player that started out on a two-way contract making $275,000 and who only averages just 3.3 points in his first NBA season with the Heat. Fascinatingly enough, Robinson hit just 28.6% of his threes in his rookie year. Now, if Joel Bell indeed believed Kai Soto's abilities, then he should be with Kai and his management East-West Private on him being still open to summer leagues. After all, NBA is the ultimate goal, not NBL, not EuroLeague even. Now, the other theory is the NBA is simply not favoring Asian players. We all know who Jeremy Lin is. 
the ever famous Lin Sanity was the first American Taiwanese descent to play in the NBA and is one of the few Asian Americans to have played in the league although we know his story growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area United States present day is not an exemption to racial issues but definitely we will not gonna dwell on that but one story back on February 17 2012 ESPN used a racial slur in relation to lean after lean had nine turnovers in the loss to the Hornets ESPN posted a headline that read chink in the armor the headline was removed 35 minutes later and ESPN apologized now going back last 2022 NBA draft despite few Asian descent prospects there was none that was drafted expectedly however Ron Harper jr. and an American but with a Filipino blood from his mom got two-way contract with the Toronto Raptors a 2022 NBA draftee that was 34th picked, Jalen Williams, although his mom is Vietnamese, his dad is an American and grew up in the United States, so pretty much still an American. There are quite a few more like these prospects, but definitely no doubt very few to none that was drafted so far. Well, personally, all I can say basketball is not a big deal sport in most of Asian countries but of course Philippines is exceptional so pretty much it is indeed a very big deal for Philippines to have an NBA player coming from their own country I mean who really is pure Filipino descent and grew up in their country a country that I can say that lives and breeds basketball from what I can see the real issue is coming from Kai's camp internally I do believe there was offers that was declined and they seem to still exploring other opportunities that Kai can still get something from being undrafted in fairness to his camp they've been open to the fans and basketball enthusiasts alike but it seems joining in the summer league is not part of their option for now As the days to the NBA Summer League goes nearer, the chance of Kai joining is getting slimmer and I hope one of these days he will surprise us through his announcement. But anyway, regardless of what will be his decision, we know that we are always here to support his journey even if he has to step back a little. As what he once said after being undrafted, it is just a little speed bump. Yeah, of course, uh, the dream is always the NBA, so I always have to do whatever it takes to get better and get stronger, to improve, and uh, it's just a speed bump, and, uh, you know, uh, we didn't get, the, didn't get to plan A, but we got uh, plan B, and, uh, yeah, I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna stop here, it's not, there's not a signal for me to stop, but but for me to keep on going if you like our video click the like button and it'll be so much appreciated if you subscribe and click the notification bell for more updates peace out